I'm going to show you a few really important definitions from uh, electricity here. So, um, well, I like this one I hear from The Office. This electricity joke's shocking. Uh, I don't know if you ever saw that show. That's uh, Dwight, at least from The Office. It's an older show, and it's actually an American copy from a British show. But either way, um, I thought his character was amazing. So let's do uh, some important definitions. And one of them is uh, when we talk about moving charge. So we've talked in the last video about charge itself, how it's... Well, charge itself, it's just a quantity. It's a quantity that different uh, particles can have. And we know that charge is something that's conserved. And that's going to be really important later on when we're talking about circuits, that, you know, these, these charges themselves, these coulombs of charge, uh, don't disappear in a circuit. They just move around. You'll see we're going to do an electricity analogy. It should make more sense then. But when we talk about moving charges, this is really what we have here. I'm going to give you some definitions first, and we're going to use them later in an analogy to show you how circuits can actually work. And one of the really important definitions then is about charge itself. So we're going to define something called I, and we're going to say it's just delta Q over delta T. This is the definition we're going to use here. So this is for this, I equals delta Q over delta T. And maybe uh, then it's a good idea to actually define what everything is. So we're going to define I as the current, which we've measured in, as in English people say, amperes. In French, we say ampères. Either way, uh, so it says I. This is not just one. It's supposed to be an I. Maybe I'll make it with a little capital I like this. It'll be more clear. So we'll say I is the current. Okay, so I is the current, it's measured in amperes. Uh, then we have Q, which is the charge. You know that one before. That's uh, measured in, do you remember the unit? Coulombs. And time, I hope you know, is in seconds. So this is just a definition. It's just current, it's just coulombs per second. And that's why I wrote it down over here, that the current is just the number of coulombs going by per second. So just like, you know, just counting the coulombs every second. That's what you do. This is the most important one. Um, you might need to know this extra one here, that if you have a, a wire, uh, this wire, you have these little uh, electrons in them. You know, you have little electrons that are sort of drifting along here. We call this here the drift velocity. So we're going to define then the current here. Let me just write this. Maybe in green would be a good idea here. I'll make the current with little like that. I think it'll be simpler here. And we'll talk about the current then. Again, I'm just giving you some basic definitions here. You're going to see it's going to make more sense later in context when we put everything together. This right here represents the cross-sectional area because if you look at a wire from the side, now you rotate it and then put it right in front of you. Can you see that you, there's going to be like a circular part of the wire if you cut it? And that's what we call it a cross-section. And that's this area right here that we can actually measure that. So we can find out the cross-sectional area of a wire. You know, if it has a radius R here, you could actually get the cross-sectional area. So that would be this area here. Now remember, the area of um, a circle is going to be pi R squared. Remember, we're trying. I'm trying to draw it from the side, so you see the perspective there. But you know, if you put it really right in front of you, it would actually be a nice circle. So let's define then these different variables just to make sure you know them all. So remember what I is. I is the current, which is measured in amperes. N is the number of electrons per unit volume. So what this is, uh, you have to consider then the unit. So this will be just, uh, well, unit volume. Volume is in uh, meters cubed. So because it's per unit volume, it's meters to the minus three because it's like one over meters cubed. Then we've got A is the area, that's uh, the cross-sectional area that is passing through, so that's uh, meters squared. We've got drift velocity of electrons, which is in meters per second. And finally, we have the charge, which you know now is measured in coulombs. And if you're just looking at the units, just to make sure all the units work, I think sometimes that's a good idea just for practice, just to play around with them. Let's just say we have the units here. So let's look at the units. We have the units for N. What are the units for N? It's... Um, one over meters cubed. I'm just putting in the units here. A has units of meters squared. Then we have V, which has units of meters per second. And finally, we have Q, which is in coulombs. And look very carefully what happens here. The meters squared times meters, those give you meters cubed. Over meters cubed, they all cancel out. And you're left with coulombs per second which is exactly what we're supposed to have here. We're supposed to have it in coulombs per second. So just so you know then, another unit of current then, just keep in mind, could also be coulombs per second. You know, that could also be another unit 
right? Because it's number of coulombs per second. So I hope that makes a little bit more sense just with this equation. I haven't seen them ask this very much on exams, but uh, it could easily show up. Potential difference, I think, is the hardest one uh, for students to understand because it's it's the least intuitive. So I mean, to move a charge around, you need to do work. This is the key thing. If you want to take a charge and actually shove it, you know, from a place to a place, work has to be done. Do we have an equation that work uh, done is just the applied force uh, times the displacement. And so the potential difference is the work done per unit charge. So we're going to actually have a definition. Again, you get this one on your data booklet, and it goes like this. The potential difference is W over Q. You get this. You're given this. You don't have to memorize it. I think the key thing is to remember what each of these things means. First of all, we have a V. That's a weird one, right? V is called the potential difference. And we're going to measure it in volts. Do not call it voltage. See this here, I say never use the word voltage, especially on IB exams. Don't use the word voltage, use PD instead. In other words, potential difference. The IB will often use PD like this, or just potential difference. Do not say the word voltage, even though it kind of is, but don't use it. But it kind of is, Shh, but don't use it. Work done. Do you remember what that's measured in? Work is a form of energy, so work is joules. And charge, of course, is coulombs. So you could say another unit then for volts. Uh, sorry, see, I, instead of volts, so the potential difference could also be measured in what we call, let's see, it would be joules per coulomb. So that's another way of writing it. See, just so you know, that's another unit of it. Now keep in mind, this isn't very intuitive. A lot of students really struggle with this. And also, by the way, the path taken doesn't matter. In other words, the way that you got there actually doesn't matter when you do your work. It just matters the total work done divided by the charge. There you get this thing called potential difference. It's gonna make more sense, I think, when circuits are involved, but at least this is just a general definition. And finally, I think the most interesting one, and this can be an IB question, I've seen this show up many times, something like this, what's the kinetic energy of an electron accelerated across a potential? So what we're gonna say is imagine we have two plates. Can you imagine I have like a charge plate here and a charge plate here? And because of that, an electron is gonna be accelerated. So the question would be like, you know, maybe the question is how fast is that, uh, is that electron going by the time it's done accelerating? And this is the very definition of this word electron volt. And this shows up in other topics as well. So when we're talking about um, particle physics, if you do the option called relativity, if you're looking at atomic physics and this famous equation E equals MC squared, we often put the energy in terms of electron volts. And you'll see why in a second. So on your exams, they don't actually give you what one electron volt is. So we have to think very, very carefully about this. So I'm going to show you a little trick here, and this trick is awesome. I'm going to start off by saying 1 EV. So 1, if I want EV, I want 1 electron, right? So that means I want 1 charge of an electron, so 1 charge, times uh, 1 volt. So we're going to write this down now, you know, uh, Actually, maybe what I'll do is I'll cut this piece right here, at least. I'll just say E times V. In other words, the charge times the potential difference. And it turns out this right here is a unit of energy. This right here is. This is an energy. Although it looks like I just wrote like a hipster mustache here, but I mean it to denote the energy here. So this is a form of energy, E times V. That's the one thing you sort of have to know. What I like is that the definition uh, of electron volt sort of comes into its word. One electron times one volt. That's what I love about it. And remember, uh, we, know, we know something that's measured in energy. We know the kinetic energy of something. We can say it's half mv squared. So this is the kinetic energy of... So this is, I could say, EK of that electron. So if I knew the charge of that electron, I knew the potential difference, I knew the mass of the electron, which I can look up, then I can tell the speed of it. Or I could be asked, you know, what's its energy? Then I would just, you know, E times V is the energy. But maybe I want to find the mass of an object or the velocity of it. So this is much more powerful, this one equation here. I think this is the really key equation here to try to look at is EV equals half MV squared. Now, what is actually one electron volt? This is actually really awesome. Watch this. If I take one, maybe I'll do it in a different color here. I'll do it, uh, yeah, we'll do it in blue here. So I take one electron. This is what I have this time. One electron across one volt, if that makes any sense. Well, then I have to look up the charge of an electron. 
And if I look at my data booklet, I can see the charge of an electron, little e, is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. That's just one electron charge. And this thing right here times one volt. It turns out you can just multiply this. Now look very carefully. What do I end up with? I end up with 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. But I have coulombs times volts. We need another unit for that. And it turns out a coulomb times volt is also a joule. You'll see that back here. Look, we've sort of proved it back here. Look, didn't we see that one volt right here uh, is a joule per coulomb? Can you see that? So that means a joule is, uh, if you imagine this joule right here by itself, um, you know that this is like a joule divided by C, right? That's what this really is is looking like. And that means if I want a joule by itself, I could put the coulomb over there. So see a coulomb volt is equal to a joule? I don't know if you believe me, but it is. So it turns out one coulomb times one volt is a joule. So watch very carefully, and this is the sort of magical thing that ends up coming from here. So you can see that one electron volt is just, again, one electron times one volt. Now remember though, E is actually a number. So E is a charge of an electron. It's the elementary charge. Remember, charge is quantized, so all other charges you find in nature are multiples of this. So all I have to do is say 1 eV equals 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19, which is the charge of an electron. But because of the magic of the units here, a coulomb volt equals a joule. So this is like my conversion factor here. This is what I need in order to convert from 1 electron volt to 1 joule. You either multiply by this magic number or divide, depending on what you want your units to do. Awesome!